90 crystal oscillators per minute, 48 manufacturers, and one more item to get it all going. Reinforced iron plates. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. And do you guys remember when we started out here? We had these three miners, we had a couple smelters, a few constructors, and then as we're getting more and more techs, we had to deal with our first nightmare, the assembler. And one of the main things we needed in here were these reinforced iron plates. Like we had just figured out smelters and then it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We need smelters, constructors, and then another machine after that? Brother. But we persevered, and we built four assemblers producing reinforced iron plates. A whopping 30 per minute. And I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty proud of myself. Thought that was the big shebang. However, it was only a doorway to bigger and better things. But now with over 600 hours into this game, we're going back, brother. And now instead of making 30 per minute, we have to make 360 per minute. But we are no strangers to mega projects now. And with a little hard work, we can do anything. So nowadays, it's not really a question of if we can do things. It's the question of how we're gonna do things. And the thing with these reinforced iron plates is, there's a lot of ways to put them together. There's the original recipe and two alternates. And obviously the original recipe is horrifically inefficient. But then one of the alternate recipes is pretty good using wire and iron plates. However, I first want to look into the third option, which is this reinforced iron plate recipe that just uses more iron plates and screws. And essentially, it's just a straight up upgrade from the default recipe to this alternate recipe. And it might be able to work very well for us in this late game production because we use that screw recipe in our very first reinforced iron plate factory. And guess what? We needed a lot of screws for that. And back then I had a different kind of mindset with how to produce things. Or at least, a different idea. And that was to overproduce low tier items so that we could use them for future projects. So you guys remember this? It's our screw factory! We've had it here since, like, episode 6 or... My goodness. The first couple episodes, anyway. And we are producing thousands and thousands of screws. Most of which I don't think are even being used. So perhaps we already have half our problem already solved for later on. But first off, I gotta double check our production. I'm not sure how much we're actually even producing here. I know it's a lot. Oh, but wait a second here. These are only Mark III lines. Oh my gosh. Then that means 6 times 270? This entire factory produces 1,680 screws. And if we're gonna use screws in our reinforced iron plate production, we'd need almost 3,000. So this entire factory can hardly produce half the amount we need. Oh, poor naive past kibs. You had no idea what you're getting yourself into. Dang though, I was actually pretty excited to get this screw factory up and running again, but yeah, we're not expanding on that. In fact, it's kind of a better thing that we're not using this recipe, because the 60 screws per minute and 25 plates per minute uses a lot more iron than the stitched iron plate recipe. Not really because of the wire, but mainly because of the iron plates used. Only 15 iron plates for this recipe, whereas the others use 25 here and 20. And like that might not seem like a lot, but the iron plates take two iron ingots. And let me tell you, these plates add up. Anyway, I guess that was a nice little nostalgia trip, but now we have a plan. And that's using that stitched recipe. So we're gonna need lots of iron plates, Plenty of assemblers, and a pretty crazy amount of wire. It's looking like we're gonna need 720 iron plates and 3,600 wire. And all of that will be going into 48 assemblers. So we need 150 machines. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Things are getting spicy, guys. Things are getting spicy. 
So in the last episode we made the mini beast here, and this handles all the quartz crystals for our crystal oscillator factory upstairs. And we marked and started our cable production for the same project. And now we have to fit the rest into what space we have left here. And honestly, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. But I suppose we have to try. So starting things off here, I still want to keep this area relatively good looking. So we're going to have a bit of a hallway here. And that's just so when we come up our elevator, we can look at the mini beast. We'll have the hallway here that goes to the space elevator. And then over here, two tiles over, we'll start building assemblers for the reinforced iron plates. And again, we need 48 of these, so what is that? Eight rows of six assemblers should be fine. Then how many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then eight. Alrighty, things are gonna get pretty comfy cozy here. So in the most compact world, could we fit all of the assemblers in here? Like we'll have to have six rows and <laughs> um, already no, I can tell. We're, we're not gonna be able to fit them. We can't build near the space elevator here. Mainly for the aesthetic when we look down, we see all the way down to the base of it. So I guess we're gonna have to figure out another solution. Oh wait a second, I know what we can do. So this entire floor, we can actually just have be the constructors for all of the wire and iron plates. And then upstairs, we have this entire empty floor essentially that we can just use for assemblers. Because I managed to get all of the load balancing for the crystal oscillator factory dealt with pretty simply in a pretty compact area around the machine. Oh dude, so we don't even have to do any load balancing here. This is great. And obviously we can fit all of the assemblers in here, right? Yep, <laughs> okay. The only thing I was a little concerned with was the ceiling height, but as you can see, we're gonna be good there too. And I think we're gonna do eight rows of six. Just because I think it would look better and we have the space, so why not? Oh my goodness, and guys, check this out. All of the assemblers fit perfectly in this area. However, we're gonna have to do the six rows of eight, but still, like, the spacing actually is perfect. We have one tile on the end here, and we had the one tile on the end on the other side. Dude, this space was meant for these assemblers. So we'll leave these be for now, and then we'll return to it after we're done with the actual nasty part here. All of the constructors, because we need, what is it? 102 of them, 48 for iron plates and 54 for wire. And like aside from that hallway I mentioned earlier, we're not gonna really care about the aesthetics. Just fit the machines in, balance them out properly, and then just get things moving and grooving. And ideally here, I'm thinking of three rows of 16 for the iron plate constructors. And that will be about yay long, which isn't too bad. And then I can just add on a floor up above here, and that's where we can build all of the wire. Except for this floor above can go all the way out to the hallway I mentioned, and that way we can fit all the extra machines. And for the wires up here, we need the 54 constructors, right? So we are going to split things up into six rows of nine. And then from there, everything will probably go into conveyor lifts outside the base, up to the assemblers, and we'll figure out how to feed everything together. But for the next couple hours, I have an absurd amount of setup to do. And then we can start figuring out how to put the pieces together. Well guys, I gotta say, I have been incredibly busy. Because all of the wire constructors are built and hooked up. And the same with all of the iron plate constructors as well. But not only that, all of the assemblers are hooked up too. Everything is ready to go. And now all we have to deal with are the dreaded belts. So we have three 780 lines of iron ingots coming over here. And we need 1,440 iron ingots going into the iron plate constructors. So that's a little bit under two lines, which is pretty simple. All we gotta do is make a two to three load balancer 
like this one. And here's a little diagram to make it easier to understand. So hooking the two 780 lines evenly distributes them into three separate lines and loads all the machines properly. And then the final 780 line just has to go upstairs and into the 54 wire assemblers. And due to the way they're set up, we just need to split them up a lot. So the one line into two, the two into three, and that's it. It actually could not be easier. There's only one little problem with all this system, and that's that the wires need 810 ingots. Yeah, so things get a little bit more spicy here. And what do we do about that? Well, the answer's simple. We just rip the extra ingots from downstairs because we're making this overflow by like 120. So if we split off 120 from both of these lines, then we just have to re-merge the siphoned off amount with the split 780 line, and we're done. Because 780 divided by two is 390, plus an extra 60 equals 450. And for these 27 constructors, each of them needs 15 ingots per minute. So 15 times 27 equals 405. So we're sending an extra 90 iron ingots up here per minute, which is okay because it's the overflow system. And if you're overloading the overflow system, it just works faster. So now we just gotta bring everything upstairs to party. So we're just going to bring all the output areas to a conveyor wall, which will go up a conveyor lift, up until the reinforced plate area. Then we'll organize everything from there. And getting started here on loading the assemblers, I think this is actually gonna be the easiest part of the entire project, because we have three lines for the iron plates and six rows of assemblers, so all we have to do is split the iron plate lines one time, and they're dealt with. And then I'm bringing up six even lines of wires as well. So we just have to load each line into each row of assemblers. And as you can see, I already kind of got started here with the iron plates. And yeah, it's not going to be too difficult to add in the wire as well. So I'll just hook that up, bring the reinforced iron plates upstairs. Then we're on the last step, guys. The final destination. So all of the reinforced iron plate belts have easily been hooked up and now are going to the roof. And the same goes for our cable production as well, leaving just the quartz from the Mini Beast. And guys, this is actually really cool. Not only is the Mini Beast looking amazing, but the transport method from here to the machine upstairs is as impressive. So what ends up happening to all the quartz crystals is they gather up onto three lines down beneath this walkway and then they shoot up the wall over here. But now check out what I did behind the wall. First off, they dip over to this other production area, just because there's gonna be a room here. And then as they leave this little room, that will eventually be here, they become like hanging belts. So I have some walls attached to the ceiling, the next floor up, and the belts kind of like hang down from the ceiling. They have like a cool little walkway beside. So just imagine this in the future. All of this is pretty much walled up. This is walled up in its own neat little box. And then as we're kind of walking through the area, maybe by our space elevator, we can look up and see all these hanging belts over there. And like obviously we won't be able to see the quartz on the belts, but that's fine. This is different. This is spicy. And it's something I really want to do more often. But right now we only have one simple task left to bring the belts over there and hook them up to the belts over here. Because each three belts represents a side of our crystal oscillator machine. So that means we're gonna have to have our reinforced iron plates here, cables here, and the quartz crystals here. And that goes for the other two sets of belts as well. And you know, at this point I'd usually be like, okay, so now we have to load balance a bunch of lines, but no, <laughs> we don't. Just everything kind of worked out, and everything ended up at the top roof here in three equal lines. Except for the reinforced iron plates that had to go through one splitter. That's it. And look at all the space I left for all the load balancing. Look at it all! Now, it will be used for hardly anything. Okay, and you know what? Maybe it was a good thing that I left so much space because, man, these belts took up a little bit of room here. But they're all hooked up now. And nothing's a concern. All we need to do, start turning things on. 
And that just means hooking up the final few items to their respective processors, hooking up the power to some things, and then watching it all come to life. Now this, this is satisfactory. I could watch this all day, honestly. And man, it's just so satisfactory watching everything you've put together come to life. All of your hard work paying off. Like, this sense of achievement, this is why I love this game. There's nothing quite like it. Ah, <sighs> but you know what? I don't think anything will be as satisfying as this. Finally connecting the last lines. So with this, all 48 manufacturers are going to start running. And our 900 quartz crystals, 1,260 cables, and 360 iron plates will be put together into 90 crystal oscillators per minute. Oh, baby. I'm excited. Are you ready for this? Oh, I can already hear him, I think. Is that that beautiful sound? Oh, yes, it is. Mm, 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 mm. It's glorious. Glorious. Our 48 manufacturers coming to life, humming their beautiful sweet tune. It has been such a journey to get to this. But all the lights are green, and it's alive. And at this moment, we shall christen it the Beast 2. I can't imagine a more fitting name for our largest, most iconic super machine yet. And man, the only thing I want now is for this belt bug to be fixed so we can actually see all of the oscillators flowing through the area. But you know what? We can do one thing. All of the oscillators are going way down over here where they'll go through what will be a conveyor wall and to the spine over there. But I'm not really going to do that right now. Instead, we're just going to set up an industrial storage bin and at least we can, like, watch the oscillators build up. Like, 90 a minute? Yeah. That's gonna be pretty fast. Quite the considerable upgrade compared to the Beast 1. And in even better news, now that we're done this, this is by far, like, the most complicated part of our turbo motor production. And it's done. So now we are going to be flying towards that. And honestly, pretty soon, we should have it automated. If there are no surprises, that is. Anyway, this is usually where I'd end off the video. However, since this is such a momentous occasion, I want to do something a little special here. And that is, I kind of want to do a quick little fly around the base in creative mode. So we can kind of see some angles we haven't seen before. And mainly, just get a good look at the Beast 2 here. Because soon we'll be putting a roof over all of this, even the space elevator, and it will be shrouded in darkness forever. So I just want to take this chance to really get a cool view of it now. Okay, Kronos Mod Online, FPS, over 10. So we're ready to go. So really all I wanted was infinite jetpack, so we could fly super, super far back and see this kind of from a distance. Because this... This is the view I wanted, brother. It's glorious. Absolutely glorious. You know, when I started this project, and I just added in the manufacturers, I never expected this to actually work. But somehow, some way, we did it. Oh, my infinite jetpack. What? Player, enable infinite jetpack. That was close. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, somehow we actually managed to do this. And man, it is easily our best project so far. And you know what? Maybe at this point, we just never build a roof over top of the Beast 2. Like, we just change the design of the rest of the entire tower. So that it is always getting some sunshine. Maybe. We'll see. We have a lot of design questions to kind of think about, considering we have to build past the space elevator now. But that'll be a problem for another day. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye